every dollar you spend, every transaction you make, I'll be watching you. is permanently recorded on a public ledger. And what's more, it's even linked to your KYC quite often. It kind of sounds like a problem, and it is. And this is not really cypherpunk, especially when we go into stables. So people thought about it, and they wanted a private digital cash alternative to this. And Monero folks did this 11 years ago, and only now is gaining some, you know, um, people start talking about it on crypto Twitter just because it's price pumped. And uh, same with Zcash, it's almost 10 years old, nine years old, will be 10 next year. And both of these are very prominent players in the privacy field of coins. However, uh, they are very different in the models. Monero is, uh, you know, the gold standard of non-optional, just pure privacy. And that led to some regulatory kind of uh, difficulties. And Zcash has optional privacy, which led to kind of... Uh, some concerns about it's uh, how private it actually is. So I'll compare the two and also introduce you to Quai Network's G token, which is also known as the energy dollar. It has cash-like privacy. So the three coins all have different mechanisms under the hood that make them private. Monero has ring signatures and bulletproofs. G has cash-like privacy thanks to address non-reuse and fixed denominations. More on them later. And Zcash has uh, ZK snarks. So let's start with Monero. Monero is a gold standard for digital privacy because the privacy of the protocol is not optional. So everybody who uses it is doing the private transactions. The technology that it uses for that are ring signatures. They are hiding the sender. Then there are stealth addresses that are hiding the recipient and ring uh, confidential transactions, so or ring CT, uh, those hide the total amount of transactions. So this makes sure that everything is hidden, as I mentioned, total standard of privacy. Monero is proof of work and it uses random X hashing algorithm that makes it ASIC resistant and actually GPU resistant too because Monero heavily relies on CPUs. So this is kind of the best for decentralization because the most number of people have CPUs out of, you know, ASICs and GPUs as well. So this is a plus for Monero. However, it may limit the computational, you know, heaviness of computations that uh, Monero miners can do. So a little bit about the tokenomics. Economically, Monero does not have a fixed supply. However, its current supply, which is a little over 18 and a half million of XMR, that the ticker for Monero, is kind of almost final because the current block reward is 0.6 XMR and it adds very negligible amount to the total supply that's already in circulation. This 0.6 XMR I added to the network every two minutes. That's the block time of Monero. However, you can expect your transaction to be fully confirmed in about 20 minutes because of this complex cryptography that's involved with Monero. For Bitcoin, the total final confirmation, just for comparison, can take up to 50 minutes. It really depends. Uh, it takes uh, six blocks for confirmation and uh, in every block is about 10 minutes, so it's up to one hour or so. Uh, with Monero, it's less, it's 20 minutes. However, it's still really not suitable for day-to-day -day transactions. If you want to, let's say, buy something at the store, you're not going to sit and wait there 20 minutes. So it's useful for, you know, if I'm sending you money, you send me money and we know each other and uh, we are just at our computers and we're waiting, it's fine. But if we are actually using it as digital cash or for payments, it's not really useful at 20 minutes confirmation times. And now let's go to Zcash. Zcash is uh, very different from Monero in its philosophy. So Monero is privacy by default. Zcash is, we're kind of like Bitcoin, but we're trying to introduce optional privacy in here. Um, although it's not directly tied to Bitcoin, it used the original Bitcoin code to become what it is right now. Right now, it has two ways to do transactions, either public transactions or private transactions. And those are called specifically Z addresses, which are shielded transactions, or T addresses, which are typical random no, normal public addresses like Bitcoin. So if you have your Z addresses, which are private, Zcash, those are using ZK snarks under the hood to hide 
what is happening and how much and who is spending. There has been some criticism in the past for using this technology, ZK Snarks, um, because there are different uh, types of zero knowledge proofs, and some of them are ZK Snarks, some of them are ZK Starks. ZK Snarks were the initial idea of uh, zero knowledge proofs, and they required trusted setup for the nodes to function. So there was a little bit of a you know raised concern about ZK Snarks, however it uh, was uh, actually addressed by the uh, Zcash community and the developers and they had this Halo 2 update in 2022 with which they now have ZK snarks that no longer require trusted setup. If that went over your head, just uh, don't worry about it. It's uh, basically using zero knowledge uh, proofs and that's all you need to know for shielding the transactions. So there are not really concerns about the centralization of ZK snarks anymore in Zcash. At least it's not discussed as widely, but there are some centralization uh, issues people have with the founding uh, fun and the funding of Zcash. So in its first four years, 20% of the mining rewards were algorithmically. So in the code, they were allocated to the team wallets. So people were really worried about that. However, that is now ended and that ended like several years ago, maybe about uh, 2021 or so. You can think about it what you want. A team does need some funding. Monero is self-funded, uh, which is uh, very cool. Big props to them, but it's extremely difficult to do. And uh, you can think of an analogy. There are like open source browsers that don't survive longer than a year because like the developers run out of funding. So on one hand, it helps Zcash to sustain itself. On the other hand, um, there are issues with centralization and how much those wallets have and whether they are going to just sell at some point. Zcash is also proof of work, just like Monero and Coin Network. However, it uses a hashing algorithm called EquiHash, which is not ASIC resistant. Therefore, you use ASICs to mine Zcash. There were some proposals in the community to, you know, go get away from it, change the algorithm to GPUs. However, everybody in that community decided to stay with ASICs which is understandable. They probably already invested a lot into them. So that's kind of uh, not the best for decentralization, but it's best for efficiency. And now let's touch on the scalability, just like we did for Monero. So the ZK Snarks being really computationally intensive and the Bitcoin architecture under the hood for other parts is not really helping its uh, transactions per second count. It only has six transactions per second if you use only private transactions, and it can go up to 26 TPS if you use all public transactions. So most people actually end up using public transactions, which makes the private pool that Zcash has very small, which is uh, concerning because it can limit the privacy that people have, because the larger the privacy pool, that means the more intermingling, the more, you know, hiding there can happen. However, if there is a very small pool and a very, you know, small amount of Zcash is uh, in there, it's kind of um, easier to track if you wanted to. And now let's go to Coin Network and it's Qcoin. As I mentioned, I will use coin and token interchangeably in this video, but the technically correct term is coin. Sometimes token is easier to pronounce. So Coin Network out of the three is the last blockchain. It was only launched this year. And uh, there are two coins in the system. One is called Quai, that is uh, intended to function as a store of value, being programmable and EVM compatible. And Qi, that is the one that we are going to focus on in this video. However, feel free to watch other videos on my channel for more information. And Qi is uh, intended to function as the digital cash and as the world's first decentralized energy dollar. So it's kind of like a flat coin, as opposed to stable coin that is tied to the price of electricity instead of being pegged to the US dollar. So the way it ties itself to the price of electricity is by using proof of work. Coin Network is proof of work and it uses GPUs for mining. And it also not just uses proof of work for mining, it uses it as an oracle, as a decentralized oracle for the worldwide electricity prices. Coin Network does it by tying the emissions of Qi to the hashing that is on the network. So the more miners are mining, the higher is the difficulty, the higher are the emissions. And they are linearly proportional. If this balance of how much hash goes into the network and Qi price is imbalanced, there is a secondary mechanism of conversions. 
and it encourages market arbitrage between Quai Network's Quai token and Qi. So you can convert between Quai and Qi at the protocol rate. So the Qi price is not pegged to the US dollar, is not pegged to electricity prices or oil prices or whatnot. It is uh, kind of homeostatic, if you know that word. It basically fluctuates around a certain value, but it's not always, uh, you know, that specific value. And the electricity prices are also different all around the world. So it's kind of the average of all the miners that are mining. And uh, this kind of uh, is uh, best when the liquidity is good at the market, of course. So the better is the liquidity, the more market participants there are, the more likely it will converge to a smaller kind of range of values. However, it will never be like a very specific price and forever stay that price. However, it is good enough because energy is kind of a very good approximation for the values of everything in the world, like prices. So even though the US dollar fluctuates and its purchasing power really goes down over time, the value of energy and how much you can say um, buy with certain amount of kilowatt hours of how much energy you put into something kind of stays similar or at least more stable and doesn't go down as fast as the US dollar. But that is a topic for a little bit of an another conversation, energy being like, you know, the fundamental resource. And that's kind of being the reason for not pegging Qi to the US dollar, but instead trying to go more fundamental and trying to make it more crypto native, actually. So with no reliance on banks. Um, I hope I did not confuse you too much with this. Uh, you don't have to understand everything to understand how Qi works. There is no cap to the supply of Qi because the supply is intended to be adaptive to the usage of the network. If the usage goes down, the Qi emissions will go down. However, if the usage goes up, then the Qi emissions will have to go up. So now a little bit about the actual privacy mechanics of how Qi works. It uses UTXO model for its transactions. It is just like Bitcoin and Zcash, actually. However, the adjustments that were made for it to make it private were the following. So you firstly make fixed denominations to make it even more similar to real world cash. So imagine you have a $20 bills, $50 bills, $100 bills, and those are very fixed. And I think there are like 16 or 20 fixed uh, denominations for Qi that you can have. So it's kind of similar to digital cash to make sure that there is no specific amount that can tie your account to you. Because let's say in Bitcoin, the transactions and the amounts of Bitcoin in each transaction have eight decimal points after them. So if you send, let's say 1.6212314, what not, People know that that amount can be tied to your wallet quite specifically. So anyways, it's a little bit too deep to explain, but long story short, they do help. The fixed denominations make a common pool of all the amounts because everybody uses them. So everybody who transacts, they use like, there are a bunch of 20s in the pool, there are a bunch of 50s in the pool, there are a bunch of 1s in the pool. So the whole thing kind of happens like that. And the second thing that she does under the hood is a forced non-address reuse. That means basically every wallet for Qi is only used once and only the sender and the receiver know each other's kind of wallets for the ones they transacted. If you want to look deeper into it, it's called Bitcoin Improvement Proposal or BIP47 and you can look it up. It was not implemented into Bitcoin, but the Coin Network developers really liked the technology and thought it was appropriate for digital cash, so they added it for Qi. And as for the scalability in comparison to Monero and Zcash, Coin Network wins here. It has over 255,000 transactions per second. Uh, it's done through the use of sharding. I'm not going to go too deep into the details of how sharding works, but basically confirmation times and settlement times are also very quick. Transactions are confirmed and in your wallet in about five seconds. So it's uh, super speedy and actually made as digital cash and uh, the developers had a lot of time to think about it seemingly because it's been in development since 2018 and only launched this year and now to summarize everything and we'll start with an economic model that each of them have so zcash and monero have pretty similar in effect of being more of a digital gold type digital gold type currency so the supply is either very slowly increasing or is limited and that makes them prone to hoarding because people who hold the coins 
expect them to go up in price and therefore they would be kind of reluctant to pay in them because like there is an opportunity cost if to spend your Monero or your Zcash right now if uh, it will be worth more in the future. Coin Network has two coins in the system. One is more of a digital gold store of value type that is Kwai. I didn't talk about it in this video too much. And the second coin that has the cash like privacy that's Qi. It has adaptive supply which is inflationary and based on network demand. Monero is if you want absolute anonymity, absolute privacy, and you don't uh, care about TPS, and you don't care about the opportunity cost of XMR being worth in the future um, more, then you can just, you know, pay with Monero. One of the other things that suffers with Monero is a compliance and therefore availability because regulators are not sure whether it's okay or not and what transactions are illicit. So they just forbid Monero from being traded or used. So it's much more difficult to access it. And if you do exchanges that require great KYC will instantly just, hmm, who, what is he doing kind of thing. The alternative to that that is more compliant and has both public and private addresses is Zcash. And it is uh, honestly a good alternative if you think about it on the surface. However, there were some concerns that I previously mentioned, like the centralization risks of the founders having receiving 20% of the rewards in the first four years and uh, the ASIC mining. So Monero being CPU is great because anybody, practically anybody can mine it who has a CPU and that's my widely accessible, the most accessible way to get a proof of work coin. Um, ASICs on the other hand are much more centralizing and uh, let's say you want to cut out Zcash, you just cut out that ASIC supplier. There are probably just a couple of them or maybe one of them that supplies a specific ASIC. Despite the name, Zcash is not really suitable to be digital cash because the supply is limited and therefore it is a very not very smart to spend your Zcash now if you expect it to rise in value in the future. And there is also very low transaction per second count. However, it's uh, a more compliant alternative to Monero that uses cool technology called zero knowledge. So you can look into it for sure. And the third option that could be interesting is Coin Network's Qi coin that has uh, the perk of having very high number of TPS and uh, being more stable in comparison to the other two. So it's pretty different and it actually like really goes hard on being the digital cash type currency, the medium of exchange, the unit of account type currency. So it is also proof of work just like the other two, but it uses GPUs. So it's kind of in the middle of accessibility. You need a decent GPU, but they are widely acceptable or accessible and uh, you can get them from most places in the world. ASICs are a bit more difficult and CPUs are the easiest. So GPUs are okay. And uh, again, it is the best for actual day-to-day -day transactions. It has enough level of cash-like privacy for this type of transactions. Maybe if you want to buy something like really nasty on dark web, not even drugs, like something worse, then probably use Monero. 